You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Everyone knows therapy is great for solving problems. But getting therapy has its own problems too. Like finding the right therapist, fitting into their schedule, and of course, the cost. Well, BetterHelp can solve those problems. It's totally online and built around your schedule. It's surprisingly affordable, too. Connect with a credentialed therapist by phone, video, or online chat, all from the comfort of your home. Visit BetterHelp.com to learn more and save 10% on your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil and we're all in the studio today. It's very hot outside and uh, Matt, you have a hoodie on. Yeah, it's like between six and eight inches from the midday sun. Somewhere between mm. six and eight. Is that a Chris Cornell song? Hmm? No. No, it's smooth. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little different, yeah. A little different. No, uh, it, it's uh, there was a chance of rain and I don't take chances. I'm a safe person. Right, so if 1% chance, that's a chance you don't want to take. I don't he doesn't want, want water on his head. But as Neil mm-hmm. has found out, it's not a 1% chance. It's a 1% chance in your area. That's true. <laughs> According to TikTok, where I learn everything now. <laughs> so the algorithm has got me in its grasp. It's just weather related. TikTok. It's all weather related. Does Tom Skilling have a TikTok? He should. Uh, where he just he's in bed getting up and he's like, "It's gonna rain today." Was, did, you, did you get to meet him at WGN? I didn't. No, he was out on assignment somewhere. Tom so. Skilling is a famous weather reporter in the Chicago area, but I don't think he gets out to the other parts of the country. Oh, WGN's I, a super or station. Canada yeah, or Canada or Australia. He, I think he has a decent following. Oh yeah, definitely not in Australia. No, he was on a barbecue doing something, talking about meat for some reason. I don't know why the weatherman was talking about barbecue. That sounds very Australian. That's Tom Grilling, actually. He's a renaissance man. Uh, But no, that was, yeah, it was fun. Matt's referring to, I I had a chance to be interviewed on WGN, our local uh, news station here, which was a lot of fun. And I learned that TV production, which I knew a little bit about, and Ken knows that they got me in and out of there in like 20 minutes. I don't even remember what happened, so I blacked Mm -hmm. out. You looked down too much. I did. That's what that's what one of the <laughs> one person said on my Facebook post. Uh, if I may, I think you look down too much. Yeah. Like, thank you. you Gotta keep your head up, Neil. Yeah, you're doing okay. Don't, don't feel bad about my it. My head up's it's not up book. now. It's a good book. Well, thank you. Um, so I'm just gonna you know cry myself to sleep after that comment. But Wonderful. thank you for for your support. <laughs> uh, but, that's what we do all through your mean comments too. When you leave us bad reviews, yeah, just cry. Well, you just day. look at it all day, and you're like, what, what what do I do with my life now after this comment? So we I used to your therapist about it. Yeah, Jeff was really sad. We got a really bad one once. We did. Yeah, we did get it. Well, we, we've gotten several. Mm-hmm. I can't even remember okay. it, honestly. Yeah, that's all right. Shame. Sticks and stones, that whole phrase. He's repressing it. Podcast <laughs> bones. We repress the, the bad reviews. <laughs> yes. Um, but speaking of books, um, we have, uh, uh, we're going to start with our guest today. We have a very special guest. Um, she helped me out with uh, with my book and just being a huge support system uh, as I was getting to know the publishing world. Uh, she has a wonderful book called Men to Avoid in, in Life. Excuse me, Men to Avoid an Art in Life, uh, which uh, is a hilarious book that you should check out. It's in stores now. She has a brand new one coming out, Friends to Keep in Art and Life. Uh, she's coming to us from Detroit, and that is Nicole Tersini. How are you, Nicole? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Awesome. Doing awesome. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself uh, for listeners who may not know, and then also about the, the two books that they should uh, pre-order right now. A um, little about myself. I live in Detroit. I have an 11-year-old daughter. Um, she keeps me busy and in my spare time, I make little humor books, um, men to avoid in art and life is about, uh, tiresome men that we should avoid <laughs> in the art <laughs> and life. <laughs> yeah, I was, um, I, I was looking at it a bit and, uh, it's like, like funny little quips over classic works of art, right? Yep. So it pairs a classic painting with a little modern text, um, and my new book is the same. It's called Friends to Keep in Art and Life. And it's about the uh, types of friends that get us through all the... Are we allowed to... We're, we can swear. Yeah, I'll yeah. believe it. Yeah. Say whatever swear you as want. much as you want. Do the Detroit... Uh, whatever <laughs> Detroit yeah, make, slang is. Yeah, make Ken work. Yeah. Not too okay, much. Good, Not too great. much. <laughs> oh, um, and, yeah. 
as I was thumbing through through the book, I was shocked at how many like disinterested women or like exasperated women are in these like Renaissance paintings. It's great. Isn't that wild? They just are like deadpan just right please, at the camera. Please yeah. stop talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was really cool to see all these men have painted these women just like clearly disinterested in what is being said to them. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Well, what you paint what you know, right? That's yeah. What I mean. <laughs> well, uh, since we're teaming up today, I, I had we had a great idea of a team name, and it should be uh, meant to avoid on this podcast, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is probably all of us. Yeah, just so. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and, and speaking of Nicole's books, uh, you can find them at uh, all your favorite bookstores. If you want to uh, pre-order her new book, uh, Friends That Keep in Art and Life, go to bookshop.org, which is a great uh, source to help indie bookstores or anywhere else you'd like to order it. And you'll also go to your website, too, I believe, right? Uh, right. I think that's just NicoleTersini.com. Great. And that's uh, like T-E-R-S-I-G-N-I? T-E-R-S-I-G-N-I, yeah. Awesome. And as we said earlier before we started recording, the G is silent like all good Gs. Mm-hmm. G is silent. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, make sure to check all of that out. We're excited to uh, read the new book. And uh, our host today uh, is coming to us from St. Petersburg, Florida. She is a savage superstar on Patreon. Ann Putnam, how are you, Ann? Ahoy, hoy. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> well, we're excited to have you. Uh, you you came rocking right away with your Dr. Teeth Muppet T-shirt, which was exciting. I did. I um, host local trivia around here for the Tampa Bay Dream Team, and my host name is Animal, so I'm a big Muppets fan. And <laughs> apparently, I only own clothes that also advertise the Muppets. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, now, have you ever dressed as a Muppet for Halloween or anything like that? Uh, no, I weirdly have a crocheted Ewok <laughs> outfit, though, which That's now awesome. I wish I didn't admit out loud. Because like a you're full outfit, like a full body. It. It's uh, it's the hood with the ears oh, wow. and then Wicket's like orange thing that goes down his carpet. What is that called? His his, <laughs> his, pelt? his ascot. Yeah, I'm not I'm not an expert um, in Ewok fashion, unfortunately. Yeah, no, but it it is. I don't know how we got on that topic from my lack of. Muppet That's okay. Costumes, we're, we're, we'll talk about yeah, the Michael Kors of Ewok giant, fashion like... later. So you host trivia. Right? <laughs> 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 That's what we're doing here. I do. At St. Petersburg is our main hub. Um, I'm barely alive from Game 7 of the Lightning versus the Maple Leafs last night. So I'm hoping that when this airs, that statement does not age horribly. So uh, go Bolts. Here, yeah, well, it is, it is, it is the Maple Leafs, so I think you're safe. <laughs> well, yeah, so they're, they're done. But now we're playing the Panthers, so it'll be a states that don't deserve to have hockey teams competition (laughs) yeah the classic all florida championship rounds well thank you for not only being a patreon supporter but for uh bringing us today's game we're excited you're welcome happy to be there and speaking of patreon uh i don't know if you guys knew this but we just passed 450 patrons wow um, we we did know that yes were yeah. we just struggling with 400? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, we were struggling with 400. Uh, we are struggling with 50, to be honest, for the first year or two. Just uh, a lot of struggling. A lot of struggling. We were struggling with one for the first year. <laughs> I think it's because... <laughs> don't everyone, mom. Yeah. Oh, I don't mean yeah. we were struggling. I mean we were struggling to get it over to that To get it over the yeah, hump. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so now we're over that 450 hump, and we're on our way, hopefully, to 500, which would be the dream... Um, at least the early dream. Until, the first <laughs> until dream. we make a thousand the dream. Right. <laughs> yeah, we we'll just keep we, pushing the dream back. Yeah. yeah. We have that stretch goal on there. Do we? You yeah. had me at the free stickers, really. So. Oh, well, good. And I think you ordered uh, one of the rare Dutch Boy posters. <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, I before I ordered it, I had gone in the back catalog because I'm like, what is this Dutch Boy thing? No, I had no. to go back quite a <laughs> ways to try and figure four? out. And then, I mean, once, once Dutch Boy... Boy really started entering in a lot of the episodes and making his cameo appearances. I was like, okay, I have to. Well, this will just be kind of fun, boy. really quick, because we're about to start here. But Nicole probably has no idea what you're talking about. So, in your <laughs> words, what is Dutch Boy? To explain, uh, <laughs> it's it's a, well to me, from what I understand, um, it's weird how much Dutch culture or questions seem to come up throughout the show. And anytime anything that could possibly have Neil do a Dutch mm-hmm. accent, it it comes in, and it's like. It's kind of a mix between like Uder from The Simpsons and then just Neil being really tired, yeah. I think, is just like, oh, Excellent. I want chocolate. Yeah. I mean, it just happens. It's not so much what is Dutch Boy, but why is Dutch why Boy? Why is Dutch right Boy? So that about sums it up. But it's but it's not Neil doing an accent. We oh, yeah, it's an actual Dutch right. Dutch person. There is a small in. Dutch yes, man. There is a real Dutch. Yes, that's true. He lives in one of those pod apartments in the corner. 
Yeah, he's it's, not. He's not actually a boy. Just, he's I'm a so man sorry. with a boy's like, a boy's voice, <laughs> a boy's voice, and, and right. uh, mind. It's so hard heart. on the podcast. I assumed it was Neil. It's, Little did I know. It's like those Icelandic fairies. <laughs> right. yeah. if, if you can imagine a grown man with the facial hair of a twelve-year-old, yeah, that's usually what it is. Which is weird because that looks a lot like Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Uh, all right. Well, Matt, you and I are going to team today. What do you want to call ourselves? Uh, I think, you know, based off of your media appearances lately, we're going to be uh, local celebrity Neil Fisher and his friend. All right. That sounds good. And uh, Matt, speaking of uh, being Patrick Swayze, which Anne showed us a copy of uh, when she got on the recording. So get it where all books are sold. And um, hopefully they'll let me do another one if you uh, keep uh, buying and reviewing and all that good stuff. So thank you to everyone who's done it so far. I really appreciate it. And again, we will be men to avoid on this podcast. And the real man to avoid on this podcast is Ken McNeil. He's a real bastard. We yeah. Hear. Well, let's hear the, the, the rules read from Ken McNeil. All right. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. Yeah, and for anybody who doesn't know, Ken McNeil is what a lot of people hear when the announcer man says Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff. Yeah, it's weird because to me it's, Ken it's like there's literally an exist. hour in between each of your names. Like the chasm <laughs> is so long. Ken, Matt, Ken McNeil. Ken McNeil, obviously. <laughs> I don't know who he is. I'm should... so glad I wasn't the only one to hear that. Oh, were you yeah. as well? Like yeah. Oh, no, it was huge. Absolutely. Ken McNeil like, is a handsome man. I think he's we a should, composite. Can we, maybe we can us. can someone out there do some search and find someone actually named Ken McNeil and we'll invite him on Ken the show. Ken McNeil is all the best parts of the three of us squished yeah. together, and then also Jeff, some sort of super who doesn't have a last name. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, let's get to the game. Yeah, let's throw it to Ann. We've been having so much fun. Lovely. Well, I mean, let's get started. And on the note of uh, men to avoid in art and life, I'm going to start off with a Michael Jackson question. My categories are sometimes going to include hints, so I'll just throw that out there. You guys were recently talking about Moonwalker, the video game, and this inspired me to write this question because I loved that video game. From 1986 to 1998, Disney Parks showed a 17-minute 4D film starring Michael Jackson called Captain EO. The $29 million production had the godfather of pop and his ragtag crew of space puppets delivering the gift of music to a world of garbage people who Jackson can magically transform into trained backup dancers. But I digress. The question is, who directed and co-wrote this masterpiece during a period of the 1980s when some would say he was desperate to pay off his debts? I think a light bulb just shattered in Neil's head, so I think we got this. (laughs) That's going to be on the next episode. Oh, yeah. Matt is doing a future reference. So <laughs> also, stay tuned, just, listeners. This is a good joke. So stay I'm tuned. not going to lie. Uh, yeah, we're locked in. Um, gee, I don't know. What? Puppets. I think Jim Henson. She's wearing a Muppet shirt. What about the... Who, who directed The Godfather? Francis Ford Coppola? Mm-hmm. Did he have done that? Because she did say The Godfather in the question. Oh, is okay. Is that really stupid? I genuinely am not sure. His movies often do feel like a fever dream when you watch right? them. So that that makes sense. Yeah, we can go with. Coppola. Does that make sense as an answer? Yeah. Truly? Yeah. Okay. Coppola. Should we go with that? Yeah. Okay. Nicole, don't you don't you? shortchange yourself. You are uh, hilarious and very smart, and have a wonderful book out. Uh, we also said Francis Ford Coppola. Did you? <gasps> that is your correct answer. The Godfather <laughs> of Pop was your clue. He lost twenty six million dollars on his musical fantasy One from the Heart in nineteen eighty two. And he basically took anything that came across his plate for the next 15 years. That Although The Outsiders it. is a good movie. But Captain EO was directed by Francis <laughs> Ford Coppola good and point. co-written by George Lucas. That's all the puppets in there. That was that was his contribution. Your second question. The category is The Scarlet Witch. The Crucible by Arthur Miller was a 1953 play and partially fictionalized retelling of the Salem witch trials. Miller wrote this play as an allegory for what controversial practice or term for the time period? 
which resulted in Miller later being questioned by the House of Representatives Committee on Un-American Activities. So I'm looking for that practice or term for the time period that he was currently living in. We can we can lock in on this one if you're okay with it. I'm I'm po- positive. Neil, you have ideas. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, I know Ken loves this play. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this is uh, was McCarthyism uh, during uh, the time when McCarthy was, uh, you know, doing blacklisting and um, the Red Scare, all that kind of stuff. But McCarthyism is, I guess, would be a good enough answer if you feel good with that. Is that from the time period it was written? Yeah, yeah, about the the trials of okay. you know the. I thought it was much older, but we can go with McCarthyism. And I thought the same thing. I was thinking blacklisting or red scare would be a good answer. So, Your 1953 play was in the middle of red scare and communism. And the term for the time period was McCarthyism. I'll also accept blacklisting. That's absolutely mm. valid. Um, Anne Putnam, little Annie Putnam in The Crucible, accused 62 people of being witches in the trials, where 17 were executed. So when we read that book in high school, my life was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'm so sorry. I I know that feeling because when the Amy Fisher trial came out, um, everyone thought I was related to her. And that was a bad time as well. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Okay, I'm just going to throw this out there since we're all doing it. Never have I felt more connected to the phrase at the end of a movie that says this is not based on real people than when I watched Hard Candy. So we're just going to say that. Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so look that one up. <laughs> Immediately researches. Your number three question. No opioids at this college. What public university, the founding member of the Big Ten, can boast the achievement of being the alma mater of the first and last person to walk on the moon. And I'll give you a bonus five points if you can give me the name of the last person to walk on the moon, specifically the final member to get back on Apollo 17. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll we lock. don't know that, right? Yeah, we don't. I don't, I don't yeah, know that Buzz one. Yeah, Buzz Lightyear. Okay, yeah. moving on. We'll lock in with the college, though. I really don't have any idea. Um, I think... Neil Armstrong was from Indiana, maybe Ohio. That's as far as I can get. Somewhere. <laughs> Purdue. The, the Midwest. Purdue Big Ten. Purdue. Is that what you said? Is that Big Ten? I don't know. I don't, don't know either. Purdue. Let's say Purdue. How about it? That sounds great. That sounds like a really good answer. And I for love the that. last person, we'll say John Glenn because we don't, oh. also don't know. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Uh, Matt had a, an idea right away, which I thought made sense uh, re- regarding Neil Armstrong. We believe he's from Ohio. Mm-hmm. And what did you say, Matt? Uh, I think that the Big Ten school from Ohio is Ohio State, the Buckeyes. Yeah, and we locked in with uh, Buzz Lightyear, but as played by Chris Evans, which is the real version that the toy is based on the, that Tim Allen Tim played Allen, in yeah, yeah. Toy Story. And Tim Allen, known for his opiates. Right. Right. Weirdly enough, you got the bonus. Um, but no, no, <laughs> sorry, no opioids at this college, the founding member of the Big Ten, and actually boasting 27 astronauts. That is Purdue. Wow. Yeah, right. Good job. You didn't yeah, even know it was in the Big Ten. <laughs> and the last person to walk on the moon, his name is Gene Cernan. C-R-N-A-N. Oh, Gene Cernan. Cernan. From Illinois. Yeah, yeah. He's actually grew up. Uh, it's pronounced about, Illinois, though. About uh, ten miles from. That actually makes sense, kind of with Purdue. There are a lot of engineers over there, so it mm-hmm. makes sense. A lot of astronauts would come from there. I thought they were still making boilers. What? What is this? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get it. That just Pete. Pete's the only one still making boilers. <laughs> Great man. <laughs> Your number four question is LDS sound system. Which U.S. state capital, which is also the largest city in their respective state, is the last state capital when listed alphabetically? So it has to be a state capital and the largest city in their state is listed last alphabetically. So I thought maybe with the clue in the title that it could be this state, um, but you were saying that there's some other capitals after that alphabetically. Yeah, but after hearing that it's just, it's the largest we're gonna lock in with this okay all right we're locked in okay um well i was thinking maybe salt lake city what are your thoughts i i don't have many thoughts on this question to be honest that's a pretty good guess and it fits a lot of the clues as long as you can't think of any like w capitals then i'm good with it okay i can't think of many capitals at all okay let's go with salt lake city okay that's a great idea yeah, Neil had written down Salt Lake City, and I was 
insistent that Tallahassee is after S, but that is not the biggest city in Florida. Yeah, no, and I, the only reason I wrote down Salt Lake City was the LDS sound system of yeah. Church of Latter-day Saints. So that's where I got the clue from. So that's why we locked in with it as well. I originally had a clue from the Book of Mormon, but my play testers thought it was too deep of a cut a bit. Um, <laughs> but so Latter-day Saints is indeed your clue here. Largest city in their respective state and last alphabetically is Salt Lake City. So number five, your listener submitted question is from my friend Josh Cobert, who used to play on tr the tr trivia team Kitten Mittens with me. His category, Field of Broken Dreams. For five points each, name any of the eight players banned from baseball because of the 1919 Black Sox scandal. I will also award five points if you can give me the half Thor Bjornsson of a man who banned them and served as the first ever commissioner of the MLB. No. <laughs> <laughs> the man who had a... A problem with his... Uh, he needed a attire. podiatrist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know where you're going with that. Uh, yeah, I can't... The other people, I don't I, I don't know any... I'm a Cubs fan. I don't know. Yeah, right. It's all, White you Sox. know, it's just like mm -hmm. lefty, lefty Lewis. And oh, yeah. <laughs> Rolly <laughs> arms or whatever, you know, it's those Rolly kind of fingers. Rolly fingers, yeah. So yeah. We'll, just, uh, we'll just lock in with one answer and get one point, unfortunately. Yeah, we're locked in. Shoeless Joe Jackson, is that what you're Yeah. Saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was thinking since we don't know this, we could just take a couple lucky guesses and say like Jackson, which I think we know Johnson, Lucky Johnson, and then like Ronald McDonald. How about that? <laughs> How many guesses do we get? Those are two, two last names. Well, she said as many of the eight as you can name, right? Mm -hmm. It's funny that you should go with so Ronald McDonald. So we'll just McDonald's take those four guesses. When she was talking about kitten mittens, but... Mm. Uh, yeah, so we went with our answers as Shoeless Joe Jackson and Time Traveling Pete Rose. Yeah, and then we said Howard Johnson. Uh, Howard Johnson? Worthington. The Howard Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> Perkins. Yeah. Uh, uh, Waffle House and uh, Castle. Rudiger Smith. Nice. Uh, Pete Rose should be included because he needs to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am okay with that answer. But yes, there are eight players that were all played fabulously in Field of Jeans. There is um, Arnold Chick Gandal, Eddie Sakote, Oscar Happy Felsch, Shoeless Joe Jackson, so both of you got that, Fred McMullen, Charles Swede Riceberg, George Buck Weaver, I think George Weaver might have been the one that some people would get otherwise. Claude Lefty Williams. So Lefty was one of them. And there was in ninth band, Joe Gideon from the St. Louis Browns who found out about the fix. He bet on it. And then he's the one that actually told the commissioner and got everybody in trouble, including himself afterwards. And Kennesaw Mountain Landis was your first commissioner of Major League Baseball. Legit on his birth certificate. His name is Kennesaw Mountain <laughs> Landis. Yeah, because uh, um, Half Thor Bjornsson right. plays the mountain yeah. on Game of Thrones. So yeah. five points each for Shoeless Joe Jackson. All right, so after five questions with a slight lead of 45 to 35, the, the tables go to men to avoid. Uh, unfortunately, Neil Fisher and his friend have just a little bit of catching up to do, but it's only a one-question gap. Your number six question. When I first started hosting trivia, I did a lot of questions related to The Simpsons and things that I learned from that show and not from school. And I haven't done them for like two years now, so it's nice to go back into the vault and do some throwback. Simpsons Academia questions. What first aid procedure? first re recommended in 1985 and now only encouraged as a last resort. Did 10-year-old Chris Bennis claim he learned from The Simpsons after using it to save his brother's life? Only a robot has actually performed this procedure on the show. Instead, Chris learned it from a PSA poster on the wall in the nuclear power plant. Yeah, let's, let's say that. Okay, all right, we're going to lock in with an answer. All right. Any initial thoughts on this one? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> my initial thought was the Heimlich maneuver. Oh my God! No, I'm lying. I did actually write that down and circle it, and then I thought that was a weird answer, so I didn't say it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's it's... no wrong answers on the show. You just say what you think, and maybe it's the right answer. There's no, I did, there's I did no wrong answers. Just incorrect. I ones. did hear that the Heimlich was a little bit out of fashion, so maybe we should go with that. Yeah, I was also thinking the um the chest compression thing because I feel like that's very risky now they say not to do that so oh, much really? either but i think heimlich might be 
better. Oh no, just do chest compressions. Even if you break a rib, just keep going. You have to do it to how deep is your love, right? <laughs> how deep is your love? How deep is No, I'm kind of eccentric. I want to do it in eleven four times, so I do it to outcasts <laughs> hey ya. Yeah. All right, we said Heimlich. Yeah. We had nothing better. I thought maybe it was stop, drop, and roll. That seems like that's not the best way to do that. But who knows? Uh, we ended up saying the Heimlich maneuver. Go with your gut, Nicole. You're on. You're uh, you're you're doing it. So Simpsons Academia. The he learned the Heimlich from a poster of a guy that kind of looks like. I don't, a guy giving a Heimlich to another guy in a lobster is just like flying <laughs> out of his mouth. <laughs> so it's it's doing the procedure, and the procedure has only been done by a, a robot on the show. Otherwise, the chest compressions actually was done, performed by Homer on Mo, and he did it to "How Deep Is Your Love" by the Bee Gees wow. instead of the actual "Staying right. Alive" the tempo <laughs> they, they want you to do. Yeah. And it's that. it's a hysterical uh, bit on that one. <laughs> Your number seven question is a lyrics question. The category is Dancing on the Sand. I will give you the lyrics of a song that hit number 14 on the U.S. charts in 1982. You need to give me the title of the song. I've seen you on the beach, and I've seen you on TV. Two of a billion stars, it means so much to me. It's got to be one of these two. It that... has to be one of those. Well, maybe no, there's only know. two options, Neil. No, that's way later. Is it? Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm wrong then. I I, I was not in the malls but when they Neil, How can you be wrong? You just declared it has to be one of these two. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Anne said, "Go with your gut." So I'm being very yeah gutly, very gutly. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Dick Gutley coming to you from live from WCX Nine today, folks. You stuck in traffic? Well, I got something for you. <laughs> I, I was trying. I wish there was a better noise, but yeah. it's okay. New character. New character. He sucks. Get he's him out he's here. really bad. He's he's gonna get canceled in 2010 for something he said in 1987. Oh, Dick Gutley. Yeah. Dick Gutley. He's gone. <laughs> Too many trench coats. Oh my god. That's his problem. Uh, it's trench coats Thursday. Everyone, know what's inside? Let's. I don't care. I think. I don't know any songs I hate by here though. Dick Gutley. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope he comes back on another episode. Um. I I don't know. What, what is this song? You, you I can't remember the song. Oh oh. I I, I got one. I got it. It's not the right answer, but I got a song. It did reach number 14 in the U.S., but it did significantly better on different on other charts, not necessarily in the United States. Ooh. Oh, that, that actually so, might change it. The but... Germans loved it. Is this Enter Sandman? I don't think so. <laughs> That's too <laughs> early. <laughs> <laughs> right? That was later, right? You know, that top, that so number one Australian on hit, Enter yeah. Sandman. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I have no idea. Do you want to just go with this random song? I want to hear yeah. you talk about the stars. I want, I want to go with the random song. I just want, okay, we're locked in. That Paris Hilton right. one about the stars? After all that, do you have any idea? Well, my first thought was um, because of the Dancing on the Sand, Rio by Duran mm, Duran. Yeah. But I don't I don't know why. I, it seems like that should have gone higher than 14. I love no, that That song. is an excellent, excellent guess because I was trying to Maybe place the dancing on the, yeah. I was trying to place that that hint and i couldn't mm -hmm. and that's what, what what it is so okay so i just put tiffany and debbie gibson because i was like they always had songs on the beach where they were walking out on the beach yeah but that, i think that's late 80s it's, i think you're right but i just put i think i'm alone now because maybe she was alone on the beach talking about two billion stars so i do love that song but it is rio by duran oh, duran wow. nice. great nice. Oh, grab. all right your number eight question fortune and glory kid the actor playing the husband, Waymond, in the recent masterpiece, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, rose to fame as a child actor in the 1980s and was rarely seen in films since. Name his two most successful films released in 1984 and 1985, where he was part of an ensemble oh, cast. Oh, 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 I know. We're locked in. So this is the person who played Short Round right. in... Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom. So what's the and second one? Goonies, right? Was it, oh, was it? yeah, I, I think, think so. I think so. I think it's Goonies and Temple of Doom. That I makes think. sense, because I think Goonies was produced by the Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yeah, so we're, yeah, we're going to say uh, Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, and Goonies. Yeah, uh, we said, yeah, short round Temple of Doom, and he was data. With, uh, he had that belt thing that every kid wanted to fly across the yard, and we said Goonies. <laughs> He did. 
That is true. The creator of the most obnoxious way to open your gate door is <laughs> Data and uh, Short Round, who kind of ruined Temple of Doom for me. But he stopped doing the lack of uh, opportunity in the '90s. He was so loud. He just screamed, "Doctor Jones!" No, I'm, like, I'm saying, well, I'm saying, female... like, why is he in the movie? Oh yeah, they're both they're both tough to watch in that movie sometimes. Yeah. But he got a film degree from USC and was a stunt coordinator until he came back to Everything Everywhere All at Once, which if you which is the seen best it, movie of the year. Fantastic! Mm, it's fantastic. Uh, number nine question: Jake Roberts approved what snake sharing its name with a Rowan Atkinson sitcom, where each season was set in a different era of British history, is the only venomous snake that can be found in the United Kingdom. I have a pretty good idea on this one, if you don't mind locking in. No, go for it. All right. So I love British TV. I don't think I've ever actually seen this show, though. Yeah. I don't know what kind of snakes are also in the UK. You it's... were in London. You see any snakes? Uh, there's a lot of MPs. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, helpful. Uh, I, I haven't seen any snakes when I was there. I mean, I did fall into a moat, as Ken says, but I didn't see any snakes when I fell in. Now, Jake Except the, the people snake. that didn't help me up. Jake the Snake had a snake, and he that was a, a python, right? It was a python. Well, if it was Jake the Snake approved, maybe it's a python. Yeah, maybe it's a specific type of python, but maybe we're okay just saying python. I'm okay saying python. Okay. Python. Let's, python. Uh, I think it's Black Adder. Oh, oh. we would have never got that. <laughs> have you at least heard of that name? Yeah, I've, I've, I, now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, i just never seen that show. The only venomous snake that can be found in the United Kingdom is an adder, and that TV show is Black Adder. Yes, I will accept either. They actually don't really kill anybody. They just make your arm really itchy. Yeah. But, um, they're they're a Atkinson. lot like... Fate worse than death. They're a lot like North American snakes, except instead of apartment, they say uh, flat, and instead of truck, <laughs> they say lorry. And they take the lift to get yeah. to there, yeah. It's exactly. funny. I thought uh, Black Adder was about like a pirate. That's why I never watched it, because I'm not a big pirate guy, <laughs> but it makes sense. <laughs> And like when you fall down the apples and pears, you know. Your number 10 question. Etna Brute, the long-running science fiction television series Doctor Who featured the groovy debut of what decorative item in a 1968 episode? This item is still in production today. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah, we'll, we'll lock in. I have no idea. I don't watch Doctor Who. I don't understand the clue <laughs> I, wa I watch some doctor who i don't understand the clue either there was i only have one even kind of thought and it doesn't really make sense but the one of the doctors had that really colorful scarf that's what i was gonna say just for lack of um for lack of better answer yeah. um she did say it's a groovy item a groovy item yeah i think that's a that's a Big clue, but I don't know where it's pointing. So let's just say the scarf. Okay, the magnificent scarf. Beautiful scarf. I, I thought that initially as well. Uh, it's Tom Baker, fourth doctor. It's sort of his, uh, for trivia purposes, if anyone ever asks about the scarfed doctor, it's number four. Um, but Matt came up with a really you know, logical answer that I thought made sense. Yeah, I was thinking about something groovy that was decorative in probably the late 60s and 70s, still in production today. I know you could still buy a lava lamp. So oh. we said... Oh, and I just realized what the answer is. We, we're wrong. But uh, the clue, I missed the clue. She said groovy, which is what Matt Smith says when he puts on a fez. And Jeff actually said it. And I didn't even realize it, but it's fez, but we're wrong. Groovy is more related to the time period. Etna is a volcano. And your oh. answer is lava lamp. Ah. I was so worried that we were wrong. Lava In your lamp. face, teammate, who gave so, yeah, me points, too. Yeah, they had too. very futuristic-looking um, vials in the background of a lot of the shots in 1968. And what powered the ship were these giant lava lamps, basically. They were very they were very cool-looking. But it was just interesting to me that the first time a lava lamp was ever on TV was, of course, Doctor Who. All right, so after the first 10 questions, uh, Men to Avoid still has the lead with a score of 85 points, and Neil Fisher and his friend, uh, 65, so right behind. Still anyone's game. Your swing round, gentlemen. We all like to laugh, clearly. It is a family show, but I have a reputation for giggling at things that people my age have no business giggling at because I'm secretly a 12-year-old boy. So I have 10 questions for you, and each of them will have an answer that may elicit a noise or childish titter, <laughs> like the word titter. <laughs> God, I, can't, I can't even get through that. Number one. 
not located in Nicaragua, like Beavis may believe, what birthplace to the Incas contains Yoros, Amantani, Tequile, Soriki, and Isla de la Luna? Number two, what is the full name of the animal with excellent engineering and tech credentials? Some call him the mascot of MIT. Number three, what is the only last name shared by two presidents that are not related? They were also both vice presidents and members of both houses of Congress. Number four, in 2017, Adam West voiced Batman in the animated Batman vs. Two-Face. What Canadian living legend and NASA favorite voiced Two-Face? Number five. Speaking of space, what is the term for a collection of stars that sits at the core of their home galaxy? In the case of our Milky Way, it's comprised of 10,000 stars and has the shape of a peanut. Number six, Ginger Baker was the drummer and co-founder of what British rock band? Number seven, what Greek god was the son and husband of Gaia birthing the first round of the Titans? He is associated with the Roman god Seilus or Seilus. Number eight, what French founder of the realist school of fiction portrayed the panorama of French society in a body of works known collectively as La Comédie Humaine? Number nine, what parent company, headquartered in Pennsylvania but founded in Mexico, owns many fresh bread companies like Sara Lee, Entimans, and Thomas? Number 10. What small fruit-bearing tree is native to South Asia and Asia-Pacific regions, even though its unofficial capital of the world is in St. Joseph, Florida? All right, we're going to mull these over, and we'll be right back with our answers. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night, ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end, what will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Everyone knows therapy is great for solving problems, but getting therapy has its own problems too, like finding the right therapist, fitting into their schedule, and of course, the cost. Well, BetterHelp can solve those problems. It's totally online and built around your schedule. It's surprisingly affordable too. Connect with a credentialed therapist by phone, video, or online chat, all from the comfort of your home. Visit BetterHelp.com to learn more and save 10% on your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Sex. Now that we have your attention, we are back <laughs> with the answers to the swing round. So let's get the questions one more time and we will see how we did. The theming of this is that all of them make me giggle because they're slightly immature answers. Although they're mature. I don't know. Either way. Not located in Nicaragua, like Beavis may believe. What birthplace to the Incas contains Euros, Amantani, Tequile, Suriki, and Isla de la Luna? Yep. The most uh, immature answer we could come up with was Titicaca. Oh, that's totally right. We we just kept saying Cornholio because of his speech. So we just said maybe there's a place called Cornholio. My sister would legit walk around the house with a shirt up over her head screaming Lick Titicaca when I was <laughs> <laughs> when I was growing up. So there is also a fun Google reference of the vaguely rude places map that you can find all of the places around the world that have completely inappropriate names. Yeah, Lake Titicaca is your answer for that one. Number two, see if I can keep this together. What is the full name of the animal with excellent engineering and tech credentials? Some call him the mascot of MIT. We had no idea on this one, so we just made up a funny name and we said it's Harry Dick. Mm. Ooh, that I is funny. I believe uh, all the things. Uh, I can't say that joke. I think the answer to this question is Beaver. MIT backwards is Tim. Some call me Tim. 
from Monty Python, but uh, Tim the Beaver. Tim oh. the Beaver is the mascot yes. of MIT. Very yeah. industrious animals. Give it, give it to them. Number three. Oh, yeah, they get that. Well, yes, they do get it. Number three. What is the only last name shared by two presidents that are not related? They are also both vice presidents and members of both houses of Congress. Uh, penis. <laughs> I'm, so, uh, I'm sorry, Johnson. <laughs> you leave L, B J out of this. <laughs> Give me yeah. Ladybird on the phone. We also uh, had Johnson over here. Yes, the Roosevelts were cousins. The Bushes were father son. Um, Harrisons were grandfather and grandkid, and the Adams were father son. So you're remaining. Andrew and L B J were the Johnsons not related number four in 2017 adam west voiced batman in the animated batman versus two-faced what canadian living legend and nasa favorite voiced two-faced i think this is my biggest stretch one we didn't know so we chose dick van dyke it's a good guess uh yeah we went with uh william shatner uh... oh that nasa favorite of mr william <laughs> shatner voiced Two face very slowly, I can only <laughs> imagine. Number five, speaking of space, what is the term for a collection of stars that sits at the core of their home galaxy? Uh, not super sure, but we came up with supermassive black hole because I believe black holes are at the center of spiral galaxies. Oh, we had a lot of answers that were definitely <laughs> wrong, but we locked in with no nut nebula. <laughs> it is shaped like a peanut. But Jeff, do you know this one? I don't. I don't remember fan. this one. Space. Fan. It's called a galactic bulge. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Ah, uh, the John Numbers. Holmes uh, universe. Yep. Number six, your music question. Ginger Baker was the drummer and co-founder of what British rock band? Well, we didn't know either, but I said maybe the Sex Pistols. <laughs> because uh, it had sex in the name <laughs> that's not bad at first we were throwing around hole uh but we know it's a courtney love based band uh, we ended up with cream oh, yeah, gets the points i think yeah, cream. cream yes ginger baker is one of the greatest drummers of all time he was with eric clapton in the band cream, cream. jeff and on, cream. A, on a previous episode you were telling us how many holes the human body has yes it was. Which was what, seven? I believe so. But just check out the Vsauce video. It's like only a half an hour, but it's interesting. So, For all you whole like fans. gender differences there. There yeah. are not, topologically speaking. That's what I said. <laughs> I, I like, said, are you sure? We're not, we're not going to relitigate this. <laughs> from from yeah, a math perspective, there is not. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to explain that to me later. <laughs> or I can refer you to a Vsauce video, which will do a better job. All right, fine. Number seven, what Speaking Greek of god one of those was the sun? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it had to be in there, right? What Greek god was the son of husband of Gaia birthing the first round of the Titans? I'm going to ruin it and say Uranus. Mm -hmm. The correct pronunciation. Well, yeah, in the future in Futurama, I believe they changed it to Eurectum, but I think it's still <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Uranus. Great reference. <laughs> It is Uranus or Uranus. Uh, number eight is my personal favorite. Uh, my What French founder of the realist school of fiction portrayed the panorama of French society in a body of works known collectively as La Comédie Humaine? Uh, I believe that is Kant. Oh, oh. That, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> yeah. I, I just thought of the funniest art name I could think of and said Balzac. Oh, yeah, that great answer. Uh, Nicole and Ken have a great answer, but it is Honoré de Balzac. Uh, great, great one. <laughs> Good job, Matt. I also knew that from The Simpsons. Oh, did you? Yeah. Exactly. What parent company headquartered in Pennsylvania but founded in Mexico owns many French fresh bread companies like Sara Lee, Intamins, and Thomas? We thought uh, long and hard about this one, and <laughs> uh, we went with Bimbo. Mm -hmm. That's a great answer. Uh, we didn't know. We just went with a local Chicago uh, favorite, and we said Fannie Mae. In Mexico, there is no like, or, like comparative term 
to bimbo. It's bimbo bakeries. They just wanted a word that sounded childish and, and sounded like youth. So they said bimbo and then not realizing kind of what in the English lexicon that connotation is. Uh, number 10. So it is bimbo bakeries. What small fruit, your number 10 question, uh, what small fruit bearing tree is native to South Asia and Asia Pacific regions, even though it's unofficial capital of the world is in St. Joseph, Florida? We didn't know, and we said uh, prickly pear, but we wanted to note that pear is P-A-I-R. Oh, I thought you would have known this one right away. It is one of your favorite uh, fruits and words to say all the time. Uh, We went with the old kumquat. Ah, I do love kumquat. (laughs) The the World Kumquat Festival happens right down the street from me in Dade City, Florida. It is a kumquat. All right. And after the swing round, uh, things did tighten up a bit between the two teams. Uh, Men to Avoid on this podcast still has the lead at 105 points, but right behind at 100, Neil Fisher and his friend. Your second half of the game. Question number one, Blue Jeans. What is the name of the American television and film production company that produced the sitcoms The Building, Everybody Loves Raymond, as well as a late night talk show who once did a top 10 list of words that almost rhyme with peas? Yes. That's definitely in it. I just couldn't remember the first word. I don't I don't actually know. I think that's right. You want to just lock it in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is a pretty weird one, and I think it's uh, Worldwide Pants. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> love the love the confirmation. Yeah, that was great. I believe. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, sorry. Continue talking if you guys need to. Uh, I think I think we're good with that, right? Mm-hmm. So I believe uh, Anne was referencing David Letterman at the end of all of his episodes. There would be the the big pair of pants, and uh, we also said Worldwide Pants. They currently produce my next guest on Netflix with David Letterman. That is Worldwide Pants. Good job, guys. Great job. Great reference, too. Number I haven't thought two, about that in a long time. I know. It's a, it's a hard one to dig up and remember, especially if you're a David fan. You know you've seen it. Your number two question category is sexy grammar. What punctuation mark was once called by Kurt Vonnegut as transvestite hermaphrodites that stand for nothing? All they do is show you've been to college. Matt, I like the answers that you just wrote down, so uh, let's go with that if you're okay. Because I went to college. Is that why you're using that Oxford comma over there? Well, um, I know he had uh, thoughts on the asterisk as well, but I think um, I'm thinking maybe like a semicolon. Semicolon? It's too pompous for Vonnegut. It's super pompous. Yeah, unnecessary. Let's say the semicolon. Yeah. I had some thoughts, semicolon. Um, (laughs) We said semicolon. Yes, the most misunderstood punctuation mark that many people don't actually know how to use is a semicolon. Number three question, is math trivia? I want you to take the sum of the letters that make up the country name of Liechtenstein and the number of states within Australia. I am not including any territories. And then multiply that total by how many stars are on the People's Republic of China's national flag. The total also happens to be the racing number of Lightning McQueen. Ken, you better figure it out. Lightning McQueen is bother with this. Let's not bother with the numbers and say 99. I'm with you. Let's do that. I love that. So we had to we had to multiply uh, the letters in Liechtenstein with the states in Australia. We're not going to do any plus. Of that. I mean times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I recommend you pick a prime number. So there's someone somewhere between one and twenty. Well, stars based on, the flag on that swing China. round, I think we should go with sixty nine. <laughs> okay, I like that guess. That's It'll a nice guess. <laughs> Finn Cars is number sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just say ninety nine because we have Pixar. No we've made You're a few. You're very changes. close. Ninety eight. Ninety five. Mm. Ninety five. Mm-hmm. Jeff knows his Lightning McQueen. <laughs> the Lichtenstein, wow. L I E C H T E N S T E I N, has 13 letters. There are six states within Australia, yep. and it's actually known um, by another name. It's the flag of China, is the five star red flag. So it has five stars, and that number is 95. Cool. 
Nice job, Jeff. I didn't do anything. You knew the li Lightning McQueen. <laughs> well, no, I knew there were five stars. Because he's got a large collection states. of cars, toys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a big fan of, of Western Australia, South Australia. I have Victoria, seen your other Australia. I have seen your bed. It is a Lightning McQueen bed. And every time I get into it, I go, wow. <laughs> wow. Well, that's for other reasons. <laughs> <but. laughs> it's that old galactic bulge. I, I was one of those kids, though. When I was when I was young, I did have a car-shaped bed. It was a Ferrari Testarossa waterbed. Well, that's why you are the way you are. Okay, yeah. we can move on. Number four, Wikipedia biography. Name the character based on the third sentence of their Wikipedia page. Often characterized as an elderly spinster, she is one of Christie's best-known characters and has been portrayed numerous times on screen, including in the 80s by Angela Lansbury. We're like just going to give this one to Neil? <laughs> As I say, this might be a softball yeah. for Neil. Uh, <laughs> answer he softball wrote. softball for me because I know Neil and he talks about it. Um, do, do you have a stab before I reveal? Um, no, I actually kind of got turned around and listening to the okay. question a little bit. Lee, so this, is, uh, you know. this is uh, Agatha Christie's probably second most famous detective, uh, Miss Marple. Oh, right. Okay. We agree. Miss Marple. I wasn't sure of how many Miss Marples you had actually read, but yes, that is her name. She is the secondary, um, besides Hercule Poirot. Detective in Agatha Christie's novels, Miss Marple. She has 12 books in her series. I think Mrs. What Mrs. McGillicuddy Saw is one of the most popular. Right, which yeah. in America is uh, 450, or in England is 450 from Paddington. And oh, yeah. P.S. I love the idea of the third sentence yeah, that, of a Wikipedia that was a cool idea. bio. Yeah. Yeah, wait, by their Wikipedia yeah. bio. That'd be a great just full game. That is a great category I can steal and have a plethora of options to, to do. It's much very easy to write. Number five, it's a listener submitted question again by Josh Cobert, my kitten mittens teammate. Which American city gave Saddam Hussein the key to the city for donating a half million dollars to the local Chaldean church? Although I bet he would have preferred a key to a Thunderbird. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're, we're locked in. Awesome. So I don't know. <laughs> Thunderbird is a car. Cars are made in... Mm -hmm. Detroit and Flint, Michigan. So I would go with one of those. True. Let's do it. Do you want to go with Detroit, Detroit or Flint? Pontiac Thunderbird? Pontiac, Michigan? Is that what we're going with? Oh, is that a place? Good it to is. know. Pontiac is. It's up to you. You choose between those three. Oh, it's too much. I don't know. And you're wearing I'm, not, a, um... I'm not positive if Pontiac makes Thunderbird. I think so, though. And Nicole's wearing no. a Detroit t shirt. Jeff says no. So let's go with. <laughs> I am wearing Be with more Detroit. impartial, let's Jeff. Go, let's go with Detroit. Right. Let's do it. Uh, Matt mm -hmm. also wrote down Pontiac, but I said Pontiac doesn't make the Thunderbird. Ford does. And then we said oh. Detroit. Oh. <laughs> Ford does make a Thunderbird. The church serves the largest population of Catholic um, Iraqis outside of the Middle East and did not know where Nicole was from. It is Detroit. Isn't it? it is Detroit. You helped me a lot. The... I was going to say, you were going to kick yourself <laughs> if you didn't get it. <laughs> All right. And uh, both teams got 40 points in that round, so the margin is still five. Uh, new scores are 145 for men to avoid and uh, 140 for Neil Fisher and his friend. Your number six question is back in the world of Simpsons Academia, which were basically my science questions today. In the episode Bart the Lover, Bart has to watch an educational film where Jimmy stupidly wishes for a world without what element? At the end of the film, Jimmy wakes up realizing it was all a dream and says, thank goodness I still live in a world of telephones, car batteries, handguns, and many things made of what element with the atomic number of 30? So I'm trying to remember the quote from the episode, and I think it's like a mon mundane sort of element, not not something that's widely regarded as important, which kind of improves the joke. But um, I don't know, maybe like phosphorus or something like that. Okay, that sounds good. All right, let's go, we'll with, go that. with phosphorus. I think there might be phosphorus in televisions and gunpowder too. So yeah, I think it's used more in the metal linings of some of these things. I believe it's a world without zinc. <laughs> At the um, end of the educational film, Jimmy tries to call his girlfriend and his dad, who just is 
reveling in his anguish, goes, ha ha, the rotary mechanism doesn't work. There are no phones. So Jimmy responds, dear God, what have I done? Takes a gun out of the drawer and puts it against his head, but it doesn't fire. And then the dad laughs again. Think again, Jimmy. The firing pin is, you guessed it, zinc. That's good old zinc. Good pull, man. (laughs) (laughs) the best and worst thing they've ever done number seven your obligatory sports question on april 29th 2022 the mets threw the first no hitter of major league baseball season the only the second in the history of the team i want you to give me either the pitcher who pitched the first no hitter in mets history or how many pitchers combined to achieve the feat in 2022. So there were multiple pitchers that did the no-hitter from 2022. So you can give me how many pitchers did the true unicorn of the no-hitter or the first pitcher who pitched a no-hitter in Mets history. All right, I'm going to once again give you the gif of uh, Bugs Bunny saying no. I think that's right. <laughs> I, yeah. I realize this is two baseball questions in a we game. I should have mixed it up more. Do a number guess? Yeah. Yeah. So let's say eight. Oh, eight. Okay. Yeah. I think Matt, you wrote down Oral Hershiser, who Hershiser, yeah. uh, who I know was on the Dodgers, but also was on the Mets. Yeah, and he has a funny name. Was Koufax on the Mets? <laughs> Sandy Koufax or Donald or Seaver? Tom Seaver was. Seaver. Okay. So I I, I do like. Hers, I, her, I can't even say his Hershiser. name. Hershiser. Well, I, I'm pretty sure that I it's between four and five on the the number of pitchers. Okay. I just I just heard like saw this. Okay. I think it's four. I, yeah, I like going lower just because it's it is a pretty. Big and I'm feat. not I'm not sure about the first one. So okay. uh, I think we have a better chance at a guess at this. So I think I think it's the starting pitcher went like six, and then they had the seventh and eighth, and then the ninth was closed out. That makes sense. And when I was a kid, I, I had a baseball card of Oral, and uh, he always looked to me like a guy from the 1950s who was a science mm-hmm. teacher. In, yeah, in really good school. glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a big aside there. So, yeah, we are locking in with four. And we said eight. With 159 pitches and six walks, Tyler McGill started it and four additional uh, relief pitchers. So it was five. Oh, Your Oakland five. And in 2012, the Mets had their very first no-hitter with Johan Santana. Uh, uh, it was the very first time they had a... That's crazy. Yeah, the smoo- I should have put the smooth pitcher. Right. Neil's joke was so funny Number to him 80. that he snort laughed. Because <laughs> I do not like that song. I had to play it so much in band in high school. So I... Yeah. Your number eight question category. I'm leaving. What Motown Records R&B family group from Atlanta were the last musical act featured on the Ed Sullivan show? The lead singer would later appear on an episode of 30 Rock asking for the group to please stop singing. Hello, I'm trying to take a nap. What's going on out here? But we don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know. And then she said what's going on, but it's definitely not, not Marvin, Marvin Gaye. Gaye. Yeah. yeah. Um we'll lock in with an answer. The Jacksons. The Jacksons. Tito and the crew. All right. I have about the same amount of ideas that sounds like these guys have. Do you have an yeah, idea? Me too. No. Family group. What about? Would it be the, the family name or could it just be like a, let's say, let's, here's a vocal group, the Persuasions. The Persuasions? Yeah. But I don't think that's right. Right. It's a good guess. They're like active now, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, these guys were definitely a family because they're brothers, and I know that they're a Motown act, so we said the Everly Brothers. The uh, It's a musical scene of Midnight Train to Georgia on 30 Rock, and at the end of it, Gladys Knight comes out and basically tells them to please stop singing. She was with the Pips for 37 years before going solo. That is Gladys Knight and the Pips. Mean. I wouldn't were... mean. Number nine, and yeah, if you haven't seen the Midnight Train to Georgia skit with Kenneth, please. <laughs> it's great. Stephen Fairly Approved is your number nine category. What brand of soap, now sold by Colgate Palmolive, with ad slogans including fresh and clean as a whistle and smell like you're worth exploring, originally came in only Ulster fragrance. That's U L S. 
T E R. Yeah. Okay, we're locked in. These guys know their soap. <laughs> Good for Holster. them. Holster. I don't know what that is. Holster. I don't know either. It's like old Irish spice. spring. Irish spring, maybe. What are dove? dove. I don't. I don't know. I'm not familiar with the soaps. Irish spring has a different slogan, but that's the best one I can think of with like a specific scent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you think of another soap brand that has like a specific scent? There we go. Good. We're locking in with that. So uh, I thought Stephen Fairley was a reference to Green Book Fairly. and Green make me made me think of Ireland and Irish Spring. And that's what we locked in with. Uh, Stephen Farrelly is actually the real name of the wrestler Seamus. Who is also who, Irish. Uh, reminds me of Irish people. Um, yes, your smell like you're worth exploring and Ulster fragrance. Ulster is a city in Ireland that is Irish Spring. Great job. Wow. When she was, well done for when both she was of saying, you like, the accidentally getting it. conglomerate there. name, it reminded me of the like 30 Rock, NBC, Universal, Shineheart Wig Company. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mega corporation. What does sense. a town smell like is what I want to know. Smells like Irish Spring. Fresh green grass, I guess. I think they have like nine more scents now, but they they didn't really branch out into anything that makes more sense. Number 10, watch out, they spit. Who holds the record for the most amount of material produced for a Disney character, recording over 16 hours of ad-libbed dialogue, all of which is protected from ever being released to the public until at least 2042. Yeah, we're locked in. Or until Disney can re-extend what they mean for copyright like they keep doing. Like with Mickey, They're trying to get Mickey Mouse into public domain right now. Oh, they, watch out, they spit. They should. I believe was a line from Aladdin referring to a camel, mm -hmm. but llamas also mm -hmm. spit, and David Spade voiced the llama emperor. But um, Robin Williams Robin seems Williams. like he would maybe just riff for a long time. That's true. And they would have like extra footage of <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I'm probably. sure they couldn't stop him from riffing. I, I like right? your answer better. Let's say Robin Williams. Okay. I think he actually inspired. Um, Gilbert as a Yago, kind of with the riffing. So, yeah, yeah and uh, Robert Williams in um, Good Morning Vietnam, all of his morning newscasts were all improv. Yeah, he only agreed to do the movie if they wouldn't promote it as Robin Williams is in this movie, and then every bit of advertising was Robin Williams is in this movie. <laughs> so he, that's why he wasn't in the second one. But yeah, ninety nine point nine nine percent sure this is Robin Williams. Matt is completely correct. They weren't allowed to merchandise his voice, and they did anyway. So there was a huge rift between him and Disney until he re returned for the third one. Dan Castanello was actually the voice of Genie in the second one. But in his will, he told Disney they still could not release any of the extra ad-lib footage from the vault until 25 years after his death. So that's why it's protected till 2042. Wow. Got something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least there's something. <laughs> yeah, I needed something. <laughs> what are the scores? Well, actually, uh, very interesting. The scores are uh, okay, I Yoda. <laughs> 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 so I have been watching Star Wars and I just built a Star Wars Lego and you know yeah the, the new Star Wars Lego game is out so yeah I'm it's not got surprised. That star in the brain. Yeah, but uh, there has been a lead change. Leading for this entire game, men to avoid has slipped into second place going into the yeah, final okay. round. Okay, let's come on. With a score of 165. Come on, come on, come on. But Neil Fisher and his friend with a narrow lead of 170. All right, thank you. Right before we give it to Anne, just wanted to say one more big thank you to all our Patreon supporters for helping us get past uh, 450. Uh, Anne is a Patreon supporter. Uh, she had one of our Dutch Boy posters, and uh, along with her, you can get uh, so much uh, more audio content than you get every week uh, that we release every Tuesday. Uh, Jeff, we do a lot of uh, fun episodes. Uh, what else can people look forward to at Patreon? Uh, aside from our bonus episodes, uh, we have uh, character boxes. We have triviality boxes, depending on your level of support. Um, exclusive access to our Patreon feed. Um, I will say uh, the the selection and very very good uh, with the Dutch Boy poster because they're not very popular, and have I lots don't of them. think we're ever going to order them again. So. If Limited you want yours Dutch now, Boy. yeah, we're going to restock some of the other styles, but I don't think we're ever going to restock that one. So now's the time to get your Dutch Boy poster if you want one. And I'll even say from this point on, if you request a Dutch Boy poster, 
I will just put a uh, cryptic clue on the background that is almost like a treasure map, and then it won't won't lead anywhere. Oh, you can meet up with the other Dutch boy holders, I and you put you were it together. Say like the Zodiac Killer, <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it's all like uh, um, the wooden uh, shoes and everything, clogs in the back, yeah. whatever they're called. Yeah. Yeah, you're really good at being a Dutch boy. He's not here today. He's okay. not here today. <laughs> You know who's here though? Dick. What was his name? Dick Gutley, everyone. Dick Gutley. <laughs> be on the lookout for those Dick Gutley posters. <laughs> it's just... oh. The poster does elicit a lot of weird questions from my coworkers at work. Oh, good. That's like, supposed what is, to. That's the point. What does that mean? And I'm like, don't worry about it. Well, even we don't know what it means. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, so, what are these uh, categories for our final round here? Your final categories are going to be sporty, baby. Ginger, scary, and posh. With that, the wagers are locked in. Let's go ahead and get the questions. Your sporty question. From what sport did hockey borrow the term hat trick for a trio of goals, where in the 19th century, a player would receive a club presentation of a new hat for accomplishing the feat? Your baby question. The social security website has been calculating the most popular baby names and posting the rankings since the year 2000. Matthew was listed as third overall in the year 2000 and has since dropped in popularity. Within five, where is Matthew currently slated on the 2021 top 50 most popular baby names? Your ginger question. What brand around for more than 100 years is the best-selling ginger ale in North America, but came under fire in the last few years for not actually containing real ginger? Your scary question. What country has headless skondahakatas, that's S-K-O-N-D-H-O-K-A-T-A-S, ghosts, resulting from train accidents. Considering this country has the fourth largest national rail system in the world, transporting 8 billion passengers annually, that's a lot of ghosts. But thankfully, they're easily outwitted because of their lack of eyes. Posh. At this year's Met Gala, Blake Lively made headlines with her Statue of Liberty-inspired transforming dress. What future portrayer of Andy Warhol also went viral by intentionally dressing as half a set of long-haired twins and unintentionally manifesting a doppelganger? All right, those are the questions. We'll be right back with as many answers as we can. And we're back with our answers. Uh, Can you read the questions one more time and we'll see how we did? We wagered zero on sports and 30 on everything else. Yep, and we wagered 30 all the way down. Your sporty question. From what sport did hockey borrow the term hat trick, where in the 19th century, a player would receive a club presentation of a new hat? Um, I said I had heard an opposite or a different um, tale of how the hat trick came into being, but uh, we didn't know and we also didn't wager. So we said... We said cricket. Cricket. You got to know what a crumpet is if you want to know what cricket is. Mm-hmm. Well, right. we, we're familiar with the hat trick on uh, Five to Nine with Dick Gutley. He, he doesn't like a hat trick, <laughs> yeah. but uh, what did you say, man? Uh, you know, originally you're thinking soccer, but um, I was thinking for a sport with more pomp and... and uh, Circumstance? Yeah, not occasion. Uh, so we went with cricket as well. And the answer that I have is cricket, but I'm curious to hear Ken's origin story. I heard uh, that uh, maybe, I don't remember what player, but he, he went to a hat shop in in the city that he was visiting, and the hat guy said, if you score three goals, I'll give you a free hat. And that's how it, that's what I heard. Hmm. Makes sense. Maybe he was still a cricket player. Maybe. <laughs> We can't. Your baby. We can only pay you Go five dollars today, but we'll give you a spiffy new hat as a bonus. <laughs> Your baby question. Um, Matt has basically been on the top ten baby list for since I was born because mm-hmm. I know at least twenty five of them. So in the year two thousand, it was third overall. All, overall. But within five, where is Matthew currently slated on the top 50 most popular baby names? Uh, we said 15. 
Um, I actually was looking up baby names recently, and I was astonished to find no Matthews. But then I realized there's no famous TikTok influencers named Matthew right now. So I understand why it's so far down. So we said 45. Ooh, no points. It's 36. Ooh. It's still 36. The uh, correct way to spell Neil dropped out of the top 1,000 in 2002, but it was 888 in 2000. Kenneth uh, is 258 currently and peaked at 94. And Jeffrey is 425 and peaked at 104. So y'all have very popular baby names. Except I can't believe the mine wrong, is the, the right second most popular. Ken, What's, how about the wrong that? way to spell Neil? Is that pretty high? <laughs> Yeah, I was. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, there is, that's still being used. <laughs> Number one right now, You're... Skyler. Yeah. Is no, it? No, I, I, have, I have Liam. no idea. Yeah. I think oh, it's Liam. Liam. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that one's huge, too. Brooklyn. Very seven. How about seven? Ginger. Apple. What brand around for more than 100 years is the best-selling ginger ale in North America? Do you want to explain our reasoning here? What was our reasoning? Uh, Schweppes, <laughs> she would Schweppes is far too old to say it's over 100 years old. Schweppes is far too old. And no one drinks Verner's outside of Detroit. So we went with Canada Dry. Yep. Uh, my grandpa actually used to, to drive a uh, ginger ale truck uh, for a while. Um, and uh, we said ginger... Ginger ale. No, we, we, didn't. Said ginger ale. <laughs> <laughs> we said ginger ale. Um, we said Canada Dry. They got sued about five years ago because ginger is not listed in their ingredients. So they've made a huge, apparently, um, campaign to include real ginger in it. And Verner's is actually, in my opinion, the best ginger yep. ale. I think Agreed. it tastes phenomenal, but you can't Agreed. get it anywhere outside of Michigan. But it is Canada Dry. Canada, Canada Dry. Your scary question. What country has headless Skandahokatas ghosts resulting from train accidents, the fourth largest national rail system in the world. Uh, we just said that the the language of Skandahokatas, right? They say that right? Sounded maybe Hindi, so we said India. Oh, that we thought that it sounded more Nordic based mm -hmm. on the SKO at the beginning. So we we were in a far part different part of the world, and we said Norway. They originated as just like dumb headless ghosts and bogs, apparently, that were really bad at teamwork. But then with the invention of trains in India, that is the scary ghost story at train stations that they have. Your posh question about the Met Gala. Blake Lively made headlines with her Statue of Liberty dress, but what future portrayer of Andy Warhol also went viral, intentionally dressing as half a set of long-haired twins, and unintentionally manifesting a doppelganger. Uh, not super sure. Um, we picked somebody with long hair already and said Jared Leto, and we could see him dressing up for the Met Gala. We had a fun little moment um, while we were doing this in the other room. I said I loved Blake Lively's dress. It was really beautiful. And Jeff said I love Blake Lively's husband, and we both shook hands and agreed. <laughs> um, that is the correct answer. So uh, <laughs> we uh, we guessed uh, Jared Leto because I'm pretty sure, if, if I remember my trades, that uh, he's going to play Andy Warhol. So that's what we locked in with. I don't think any of you are actually fans of this actor, but it is indeed Jared I like Leto. him more for his music. That's not true. He dressed, um, he twinned out with his Gucci fashion designer. They wore the same outfit and both had long hair. But then there was apparently a completely different person that was in a very space age costume at the Met Gala that everyone thought was Jared Leto because he looked <laughs> just like him. So he was misrepresented throughout all of the Twitter land as Jared Leto when he is in fact mm -hmm. someone completely different. Oh, Jared. Final scores are in, and I'm I'm proud to say that Men to Avoid with a score of 225 is this week's cream of the crop. We must the crap. <laughs> 200, 200 points only to Neil Fisher and his only friend. Only 200 points. Wow. Terrible job, guys. Terrible. <laughs> you guys, you guys <laughs> did great. 
But Ken gave me this look when I was drawing out the five point difference earlier, so I cut right to the chase. Thank you. Usually, you know, we go the other way. We just talk about uh, running. Yeah, you usually do. I, That's I usually prefer, how it goes. Yeah. I kind of prefer the way that the score was announced um, off mic, where uh, Nicole just said quietly, "Did we win?" <laughs> and then there was a there was a also was a quiet yeah. yay. <laughs> I think your reaction was the most appropriate for anyone who's ever won on this show. It was celebratory, but not overly so. Yeah, <laughs> because show her what she won. Nothing. <laughs> well, she has some pre-orders. I was promised money. Well, Nicole, uh, your prize is uh, your final comments today. Thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, Men to Avoid in Art and Life is coming out soon, correct? No, Men to Avoid in Art and Life it's out. is out. It's out, so look yes. for it now. It's in the store. I have it in my hand right now. We are physically right holding it. <laughs> uh, the follow-up is coming out in September. Awesome. Uh, Friends to Keep in Art and Life. Yeah. And where can we find this besides online? Um, Pretty much any like indie bookstore you go into should have it. Um, like Paper Source has it. It's in very odd little gift shops. Museum gift shops have it, which I find to be very interesting. I think that would look very good in a uh, in a Urban Outfitters also. Uh, it is in Urban Outfitters go. as well. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Nicole and Anne. Thanks for having great, me. It was fun. Great hosting job. Love the questions. Love uh, that we won. Um, but uh, <laughs> any any final statements from you? Oh, uh, thank you guys for having me. We. Um, heard of you originally from trivia warfare Good and I, I did a lay it on me i think of your wrestling and that's almost exclusively what we listen to is triviality and then i'll li i'll listen to trivia warfare on the side um with my <laughs> sleaziness it's mainly because of the wrestling though that uh you guys worked your way into his heart of those those polls that you can do sometimes but i loved it i appreciate the opportunity to hear my own voice and i hope i can come back again in the future yeah absolutely yep we'd love to have you back both of you thank you so much for joining us today uh, and thank you once again Anne, for being a patreon supporter you can join her at patreon.com slash triviality podcast make sure to check out nicole's books and uh, follow her on twitter at nicole Ter tersini uh, and uh, yeah, follow us at Triviality Pod. You can uh, reach out to uh, be on a game at uh, our links on all our socials to sign up to do that. But uh, for today's episode, thank you to Matt, Ken, Jeff, Ann, and Nicole. My name you're is welcome. Neil. And you're welcome. That was <laughs> Triviality. I do love that song, but it is Rio by Duran Duran. Celebrating its 40 year anniversary, and Duran Duran was just elected into the Hall of Fame about after time. Like 10 years of fan voting. Low bar. I, I, I love them. I, I could be wrong, but I think they just released a new album, too. They did. They sure did. Because I was and like, it's... I was like, I'm gonna listen to some Duran Duran. So I pulled them up on the the app or whatever. I was like, they have a new album, <laughs> new release. You like, know who else no has thanks. a new album? Tears for Fears. Tears for Fears. <laughs> that makes sense because you came in today and you're like, I'm hungry like the wolf. And I said, like, Why are you saying that? Yeah. <laughs>